So this is the missing demo for the Gryphon Diamond Bandsaw that I should have added at the end of the review that I did earlier, but uh, better late than never, right? So what I gathered up are some tiles from different stores that we can go cut up and see how it does on straight cuts, soft curves, and then some tighter curves. Now I picked up some glass tile that are nominally 5 16 or eight millimeter thick. So we have some nice heavy glass to go and cut through. I also have just, you know, a regular boring ceramic tile that has a glaze on it. So I mean, ceramic is a little different than cutting natural stone. And then I have a natural stone tile here. So this is a, you know, a polished piece of travertine. It looks like it's about 5 16 It's about the same thickness as the glass tiles. So I have my, my goofy setup here so that the, the saw won't move on me. Uh, normally you wouldn't put it on a really slick piece of plastic like this and expect it to stay still. I would be just doing it out on the, on the driveway or out on the patio, but it's Arizona and it's really hot out there right now. So we're in here with a little bit of a makeshift. So let me set everything up here. So those will be our cuts. Hard to find something that'll write on that. Now I will say that there's a little bit of tracking to do with this. Now I don't know if it's just because it is a lot thicker glass. Uh, I was actually expecting there to be a little less. Where I started the cut, it was doing really well until I got about up to here, the last, say, inch or so. Then I don't know if it was me wiggling around or what, but then I was having a little bit more difficulty tracking. Overall, it looks pretty straight. It's a very smooth cut. So with this, I think that you'd be able to hone that kind of nicely, especially on some of the grinders that are made for doing some glass work. You wouldn't have very far to go if you wanted to get that dead straight. And overall, there's no, there's no rough spot on here. I'm finding it I'm not too concerned rubbing my fingers over it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do the curve. It's not all that surprising, but it seemed like it was easier to track on this curve than it was on a straight line. Uh, I did overcorrect at one point where I thought I was, I was drifting more than I think I was, and I, I overcorrected across to the other side of the line. So there is a little bit of a notch there, but that was, uh, this is the first time I ever cut any glass. So don't know. And this is pretty thick. I did want to try getting some thinner glass that would more mimic, say, stained glass. But everything I could find around here was only three thirty seconds thin, and it was really, really, it, it's made to be snapped at home. So it seemed like it wouldn't be a very good test of that. So I wanted to go for something definitely more substantial. All right, so the next one will be more interesting. This shape here I made is more, I don't know, maybe be more like a butterfly wing. You can sort of see it being that way. Uh, we'll see how we take the curves. Now on that one, for some of the tight curves that I had, I had a tight curve up, up here, and then I had a tight curve down there. For some reason down there, I don't know what I was doing, but I kept over, overturning the blade. So uh, it was turning, but I don't think I gave myself enough relief. One of the things that I did on the turn is knowing I needed to turn the blade, and of course the blade's got a, you know, a decent enough width, is that I shot past just a little bit, and then I was using the diamonds that are on the side of the blade to kind of trim my way back to give myself some room. So I did all right on that for this top one, this bottom one down here. I think I just didn't quite do that right, and it kept uh, pushing the blade more than I expected. But overall, I mean, the cut is still the cut is surprisingly smooth. I have to say, I mean, there are definitely um, there are definitely bandsaw marks on here. Don't get me wrong on that, but I think that there wouldn't be. Uh, I guess I expected to be more chipping and such. Now for doing this ceramic tile, the other ones I could write on with a sharpie. I'm just going to use a grease marker on here like that. So those will be our two shapes for this one. This one here getting a decent amount of straight before we go into some soft curves. <laughs> Now 
That cut a lot easier, much, much easier, <laughs> than the glass. You can see that just by the speed. One thing that's odd is I thought the grease marker was, the grease pencil didn't even stay on this tile, so I have to redraw the butterfly wing before we go there. But the cut was pretty easily done. Pretty easy to stay on the line. At one point I overcompensated and I drifted to the other side of the line, so I just stuck with it and stayed on that side instead of trying to correct. Seems like that would be a lot better to do even in a regular glass or tile project. Now the speed difference between these two was pretty impressive, but you can see that the thickness, these are the same thickness. So they're both about eight millimeters thick, but the glass was significantly more dense. I actually thought glass was gonna cut easier than the porcelain tile, I don't know why. Yeah, I did a bad job of following the line near the end on that one, so I tried to compensate a few times. This piece, the piece that I was cutting out, came out okay. This one here has a couple steps on it because I backed up uh, the blade. But otherwise, it goes through very, very easily. The, uh, you know, I guess, butterfly wing. <laughs> this part of the curve up here was actually really easy to do. Down here, I probably should have gone slower for that. <laughs> I did a tight turn up here. Now this is what I was considering the off cut. So this one here, I did back out the blade a little bit to give it some relief for doing the cut. Um, the cut itself came out smooth on the keeper side up here. It's got the little notch there. But one thing I noticed is that on the second turn that I had that was just as sharp a little bit here, uh, really slowing it down and just barely pushing in helped a lot on the tracking. So I'm sure a lot of this is just tinker with it and you'll you'll get the feel for how the bandsaw works. So, but definitely don't push it so the blade is all bent. So hopefully this answers some of your questions. Hopefully the camera coming right down on it, you could see kind of what I was doing. And certainly I'm new to this saw. Basically the demo I did last time, the project I did for uh, my Tim Burton table, and then these demos here is most of the work that I've done with it. So uh, I think if you were to tinker with it a while, you would get more used to how to do the tracking and some of the other changes. And I honestly think it'd be nice if this upper guide, if there was a longer version of it that would come down so that maybe it was hanging onto the blade a bit more down here. So uh, I have a friend with a 3D printer and I'm gonna see if he can possibly make some of those.